Okay, the second chapter, chapter we're going to talk about uh, energy and equilibria, uh, steady states. Um, we're going to talk towards the end, probably won't get to it today, about cat catalysis and uh, also enzymes, which are organic catalysts that are found uh, in bio biological systems and organisms. This was taken last summer. In fact, it's still this summer, isn't it? This was taken this summer. That's my son. <laughs> he loves that rock. <laughs> yeah. Well, they were all jumping off. I thought they were all crazy. But uh, my son is especially crazy, or at least he fits right in. So I call this chemical equilibrium. It, the reason I do that, it's, it's not just chemical equilibrium, but the ideas come from chemical equilibrium, at least in my education they do, what, what I know and what I learned and how I learned it. Uh, chemical equilibrium is something that one studies in uh, introductory chemistry for the majors, and it is the thing that really drives uh, those people taking that course absolutely insane. I've talked to many, many a student, and they go marching through chemistry, if indeed they do go marching through it just fine. When they get to chemical equilibrium, for some reason, the, the, the switch is just turned off, the light is turned off. Um, but chemical equilibrium is very important to understand, to really understand how organisms work. Because you really have to get an idea of reversible reactions and, and how things can be perturbed in this direction or that direction, or even the basic idea that it takes energy to keep things away from a ground state, away from equilibrium, and that the entire biological world is constantly falling towards equilibrium, which is pretty much equivalent to death, and taking in energy in order to keep away from equilibrium. So to understand equilibrium, to understand generation of, of, of ATP, which is our, our cells do to move energy around the, uh, the cells, the, to understand the movement of things across membranes, which is hugely important for understanding how cells work, you really have to have an appreciation of equilibrium. And so this is my attempt uh, to, to drive home what equilibrium is all about. And I show this, this picture um, because my son is perturbed away from equilibrium. And having removed the impediment to his falling, which is the rock he was standing on, he is now going to fall essentially towards equilibrium until he can't fall any further towards the center of the earth, which of course is when he hits the water. This is something that happens to be hugely important to understanding how organisms work, not, not jumping off of rocks and falling in the water. But the idea that you could be in a position that has potential energy, that potential energy can be converted into kinetic energy, and that the kinetic energy doesn't necessarily last forever, particularly if there's friction around. So, the first time I taught this course, I was walking into school in the wintertime um, for a 7.50 meeting, and I was leaving the house at like 6 a.m. In fact, the first day that I walked, um, leaving the house at 6 a.m., of course, it was pitch black out, and I literally walked into a ditch and fell. I was getting out of the way of a school bus. It seemed important to get out of the way of the school bus. And so I you know, got off the road a little bit, and it was, I decided I would continue to walk, which is the stupid part. And I walked right into a ditch and went over. Uh, but at any rate, it was cold. And I realized, because of course I was talking about, or going to be talking about these ideas of steady state, um, that in fact the reason I was cold has, can be thought of in terms of a steady state. So this is my thumb. And I think this is actually the first figure I drew for for, for the class. Um, and, and what's going on is that my thumb is warm because my body keeps my thumb warm. It's part of my body and my body tries to maintain a temperature around 37 degrees centigrade. But, but heat radiates out. And as it's radiating out, I lose heat. And in fact, the rate at which the heat leaves my body is faster the colder the temperature is. <coughs> and if you have perfectly still air, uh, then you're going to establish a heat gradient starting warmer near me and then eventually reaching the temperature, the ambient temperature of the air around me. 
And this is a steady state. This, 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 this um, heat uh, gradient is, is, is a constant thing, but it requires a constant input of energy to maintain. So what you have is my body is constantly trying to warm up my thumb, and the heat is constantly being given off pretty much at, at a constant rate. And that heat extends off into the universe at, at a, a, a constant distance. It actually extends off infinitely, but uh, it only goes so far that it's measurable. If it's a windy day, what happens is, is all of these gradients get disrupted. And that means that the temperature nearer to your skin is colder. And therefore, in fact, you lose energy even faster. That's why windy days make it, 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 you feel colder when there's wind. But this is a steady state. You can think of it as an equilibrium because essentially you've got this standing gradient of, of temperature, but it really isn't technically an equilibrium because it only works because you have a constant supplying of energy. The supply of energy is coming from your body. That energy comes from somewhere inside your body. And so you're using energy to maintain your body temperature. And that's what's supplying the difference in heat between you and uh, the rest of the world. And that's why you have this gradient. If you stop making, uh, keeping your body at a temperature that's higher than uh, that of your surroundings, you'll, you'll, you'll go to what's known as thermal equilibrium, which is the point where you, your body's temperature is the same as your surroundings. And of course, in a cold day, if that happens, you're, you're literally dead. I mean, you're dead before it happens because that's what allows your body to go down in temperature like that. <laughs>